welcome back to the channel where we are continuing our over the wire bandit game our capture the flag uh, this is our walkthrough slash study guide because most of my videos i am walking through because i sort of know what's going on and then it turns into a bit of a learning session anyway so i learned you learn we have fun let's get into it uh, we're going to be starting off with our level 10 here so i've got myself signed in and i'm ready to go uh, our level goal is the password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt and is in one of the few human readable strings produced by several equal sign characters the commands you may need to solve this okay so we don't need to find it <laughs> it's already there so let's just take a step back. So let's LS and uh, we'll cat that out. And here's our problem. Um, it's, it's gibberish. So whether or not that means it's like a binary file or they run it through something, I'm not sure. But that's all good. Uh, what we need to do is sort through it. Let's try sort, see if that gives us anything. Can we sort it and then maybe pass that output through grep and find a pattern with just a few equal signs, because um, it says that there's several. Can we try that? Standard input binary files matches. So that didn't find anything. What if we just cat it out, pipe it through grep? We're still getting standard input binary file matches. So let's take a look at this other command we've got, strings. Print the sequences of printable characters in files. Now that does sound much better. So if we pass data.txt through strings, well, that's that's closer, that's better than sort. Um, so let's, let's get a bit creative. Can we strings, pass that through sort? I don't think we need to necessarily sort it. If we can just at least grep it and find something with some equal signs. Well, uh, yeah, that's good. So strings was the command that we're after and we'll take a gander that the password is this. Awesome, so let's switch over to our next one. We're going into the 10 user, chucking in that flag and we're in level 11. The level goal, the password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt which contains base64 encoded data. So we've got our data.txt there. So let's just again see what we can find. Let's just cut it out. Oh, okay. So this sort of looks like our string of uh, flags that we've had, uh, flags, that's a string. Um, but we know that this is encoded. So let's do a little bit more research here. So in computer programming, Base64 is a group of binary to text encoding, encoding plain data in plain text. Encoding gets pretty complex. Um, the way that I think about it is, so our data, in this case, our flag has gone through a Base64 encoder and come out looking like this, okay? So it's in base64 at the moment. So we need to use a tool to convert it from base64 and get it back to our string, okay? So there's, there's, there's the Mr. Ash simple version of what we're doing, all right? So we need to use something and I'm gonna take a bit of a stab that base64 is uh, what we're after. So let's have a look at this. Base64 encode and decode data and print to standard output. So using the dash D, we can decode our data. So that's what we want. Let's press Q. So let's run base64 dash D against our data.txt. And the password is this. Okay, copy that. Change over to bandit 11 user. And we'll go over to level 12. Level 12, the level goal. The password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt, where all lowercase a to z and uppercase a to z have been rotated by 13 positions. Interesting. So ROT13 on Wikipedia. So we have a bit of a helpful link going to push us in the right direction. So there is our data. So we've got um, read and write access. Is that, if I remember correctly, that's groups and everyone else. If you uh, we've done our permission studying. So let's see if we just can cat that out and see what we get. So it's in the same format as our last one. The password is this. But as it says, all of the ca characters have been rotated 13 positions, it means we need to figure out something that can reverse the process. Same like encoding and ROT 13, rotate by 13 places. So this is a simple letter substitute cipher that replaces letters, replaces a letter with the 13th letter after it in the alphabet. 
And here we have our example of hello with uh, rotate 13. Let's find a command, something that's gonna help us here. So far from what we've seen, like we're not searching through a file like we can see it. We're not sorting it or using, finding unique things. We're not really finding the string because it's already in string. So out of these, we may find base64 might help us. So looking at the next one, base64 didn't really have any other thing. TR translate or delete characters. Now this could be in the right area because we do want to try and translate or decipher characters. So this might. So from just looking up on the interwebs, helpful stack overflow user says that we could pass through data, pipe it through the TR. And I guess this is the format. It's saying the capital letters A to Z, the lowercase letters A to Z transfer to N to Z, A to M. So this is, this is a bit of a tricky, this is a bit of a tricky one. So let's try and cat out our data.txt and then pipe it through. And I'm just gonna get this straight from, and there you go. So this is a pretty niche one. Um, and it's nice that they, they also include the alias command. So if you just wanna make this a little bit easier, uh, we could go and run this. Um, and what that's gonna do is just put in your uh, system's memory or just in the system itself, RAT13 is equal to this. And as it says, we can cat out our data and just pipe that through ROT13 now and uh, we'll get the same result, which is quite cool. So save that off, exit out, log in, and let's head over to level 13. We've got our level goal here. So I can see we've got some extra commands that are being added here. Uh, so we'll go over some of these. The password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt, which is a hex dump of a file that has been repeatedly compressed. For this level, it may be useful to create a directory under the temporary directory in which you can work using the make directory uh, command. For example, make directory temporary my name one, two, three. Then copy the data file using CP and rename it using MV, read the man pages. All right, let's do this together. So these are some more uh, important commands. Okay, so let's ls. Okay, we've got our data.txt. So instead of changing this file, uh, we're gonna actually make a copy of it and put it somewhere else. So first let's make directory and let's put it in the temporary directory. And I'm just gonna go Mr. Ash like that. Next, let's make a copy of this data using our CP for copy and let's put that in that temporary folder that we've just created. Great, now let's just change directories over into that temporary folder and then ls and we have our data.txt there. So now we've made a folder and we've made a copy of it. Let's cat it out. Okay, so this is, as it says, a hex dump. So it's in a different format to what we've been seen before. So let's look at our commands and see how we can start to interpret this data. Now I know for a fact that our xxd is going to give us a bit of a hand here. Man xxd, make a hex dump or do the reverse. So this is a hex dump. We want to do the reverse. We want to get it. So we've got a dash r for revert options and input file. So I'm just going to do that. xxd dash r against our data.txt. That gives us something else. So it looks like it tried to interpret it and it didn't work. So after looking at the man page again, we've got a dash R like we just tried to revert. I think that did work, but I'm just gonna throw this dash P in here because it says to read plain hexadecimal dumps without line. So I'm not sure if I need the dash P, but I'm just gonna use it anyway. So we're gonna run our command dash RP on the file that we are reversing from hexadecimal dump or hex dump. And then we're just gonna put it in another file called data. So if we list that out, we've now got our hex dump and then we've got our new file. So there's also another file that we could use here, sorry, another command that we could use here called file. So let's just have a quick look at that one and it's determining the file type. So this is gonna be super good for us. This is what we need. If we've just pulled this out in one format and put it into another format, we need to we can actually specify, we need to find out what type of file it is. So we can just run file all, and we can just have a look at uh, the first one that we pulled out is a gzip. And then that last one that we were looking at was indeed an ASCII text, but you knew the format was hex dump. But this is what's interesting, is the gzip compression data was data2.bin, 
last modified, then max compression. Okay, so another form of compression, right? What do we have here? A gzip command. So let's have a look at that, man gzip. Gzip, gunzip, or zcat, compress or expand files. And scrolling down a bit under the options, we can see a dash D or dash dash decompress or uncompress, which does what we think. Cool. So let's run that gzip dash D against our data file. So it didn't like that. Let's run it and put a F on it to force it. So because it has an unknown suffix, it's not going to force it. So maybe let's rename it to what it previously was data2.bin. And because it'll be in a dot bin, then maybe it'll work. Let's try that. So we, to rename a file, we can use the move command. So we can move data. We're not going to move it anywhere else. We're just going to move it and rename it to data2.bin. Hit the up arrow, go back to the original one. Okay, so it still didn't like that. If we change it maybe to gzip, so just by looking this up, it looks like we need to have it in a different file format, like .gz. So I've just renamed it for like the billionth time, and this time gzip is recognizing it. Cool, ran that with no error. So let's have a look at what we've got. So our data is there again. So let's run file against it. Uh, this time there's no .gz. All right, so this time it is a compressed bzip2. So have a look at the man page for bzip2. And I assume that we've got a dash D like similar. bzcat to decompress files to standard output. If the file does not end with one of the recognized endings, it won't work. So we've got to change it to something like bz2 or bz. So let's move data again to data. So we can use bzcat or we want to stick with bzzip2, just use the dash dc to decompress all. So we'll run that command against our renamed data.bz, but I just want to redirect that output into another file called data. So if we just list everything out, so we had the bz that we just made and that redirected output which whoops actually just looks like this so a bunch more gibberish which means it's encoded or it's something that we need to figure out so we've just put that inside this data so if we looked at the files again this next one is a gzip so this is it, it's a bit of a process here so we'll move it again and rename it to gz use gzip with a dash d against that. So after listing it out, indeed got our data out of it and looking at the files again. So we have something else called POSIX, a tar archive. So there's another compression program that we've got here. So looking at the man page, it's an archiving utility. So we have a tar dash dash extract, which might help us out here. So it says here that it a dot tar. So I'm going to guess that we need to rename it to a dot tar. So let's move our data into a data.tr. So data, wait, no, was it tar? Was it extract? Let's just, yeah, dash dash extract. Yeah, we'll give this a go. So ran extract, it recommended running the dash F. So to, I assume to force it. So hopefully we've got something now. So the new file that we've just made from our data.tr, which was the archived file, we now have a data5.bin. So let's, see what that is by running file against it. So it looks like it's the same. So can we just run tar dash dash extract dash F directly against that data five dot bin? Will it let us do that to have a list again? So we've got data six this time. So let's run file against it and we've got a bzip again. Man, this feels like it just goes on forever. So we're on bzip two dash DC again against our new binary file, but let's just output that into data file. So we've got that next data file. So let's see what it is. So another tar. Am I going in circles? I feel like I'm going in circles. So again, tar dash dash extract dash F to force it to get that. Okay, we're up to eight now. How far does this go? It's another gzip. So we'll just move that new data.9.bin. We'll just call it data9.gz. Whoops, got ahead of myself. We're still on eight. So it's move data8.bin to data8. And then gzip d data.8.gz, which gave us data8, I think. I'm honestly getting lost at this point. Let's just uh, clean up our files with the remove. Let's just remove data.bz. We don't need that anymore. Um, also tr, I mean, heck, even the data.txt we don't need anymore. Data5 and data6. We'll just get rid of all that. Oh gosh. 
Okay, so we're just left with the data 8. So let's just uh, look at that. File, to 8, and his ASCII text, oh my gosh, is it over? Oh, it's there, we finally got it. That was probably like three or four too many compressed, you know, inside each other. But that's okay, you know, we got there. It, it's a good, it's a good exercise to at least, you know, keep up with what we're doing, you know what I mean? Like just understanding where we are, like we got there in the end. Yeah, nice, okay, that was good, that was fun. Okay, great. Logged into the last one for the video. So let's go over to level 14. Level goal, the password for the next level is stored in Etsy or etc or ETC Bandit Pass Bandit 14 and can only be read by user Bandit 14 which we're not. For this level, you don't get the next password, but you get a private SSH key that can be used to log into the next level. Note, localhost is a host name that refers to the machine you are working on. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more into the networking side of things. This is a nice one to leave the video on. Um, well, do the last one on. Okay, so it's told us where this file is and it's told us a bit of information about SSH. So uh, let's just do what we've usually been doing ls and we've got an SSH key dot private. So let's now copy over where that file is supposed to be. Let's run ls dash l and paste that in there. And we can see here we have a read access, but it's not our file. So we don't have read access. We can't read it. As it said, we don't get the next password, so we can't just read it. Otherwise, that would be the end. So we don't have read access. Bandit 14 does, and that's what we need to do. So we need to use SSH using this private key. So this is something called an RSA private key. So we need to use this to log in. So the way we can start to think about this is sort of like this is the password to authenticate us. So we know we're going to be using SSH, but we need to look at it. How can we pass through a file instead of a password? So looking at our options here, we have a dash I for an identity file. Let's give that a go. So if we run dash I and pass through our SSH private key, that's looking pretty good. Hopefully that'll authenticate us. But we remember as we've been using SSH to get into these rooms, we do need to specify who we are and where we're going. So in this case, we're gonna be Bandit 14, because that's the user who can only read this file. And in this case, we're gonna be logging into our host, which is just where we are, the system that we're on. So we're gonna be logging back into this system using this. So it's authenticating. I'm uh, sure you wanna continue connecting. Yes. Okay, permission denied with the public key. We're trying to log into SSH on port 22. Hey, we don't use port 22, remember? We use port 2220. Hey, that was the issue, our port. Uh, so it doesn't mention anything about the port, but we used our thinking. So that means we should be able to copy that and we can cat that out. And there is our flag the next level. All right, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I actually learned some by going through this and I'm super excited. Uh, if you like this video, um, please leave a like and if you loved it, please subscribe. That would be great. Any feedback would be awesome. Um, I'll put a video up on the screen for you to watch now. Uh, it's a good try hack me video. If you haven't done your Nmap room, it'll, uh, it'll show you that. That's a good one. It'll be more networking too. And this is where we're going with the next levels, I assume, because I haven't actually done the next levels and I'm super excited to get into it. So if you want to go watch that, go watch that. If you want to stick around, uh, you can, but I'm out. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.